Graham. It's a long time, isn't it? Um, 6.23 is the time this morning, and it's the start of yet another, it's been a few of these, crunch week in post-Brexit trade talks, which start up again in Brussels this morning. Yeah, this time we are really getting close to the wire, and that means business leaders are keeping a very close eye on developments. Nina is going to explain why. Yes, good morning. Talks on an knife edge. Last roll of the dice. A definite <laughs> sense of deja vu, yeah. but we absolutely mean it this time. Good morning. Yeah, Brexit, the B word. Let's recap on where we're up to. The UK officially left the EU on the 31st of January. Now, at that point, we entered an 11-month transition period. It was supposed to be time for the two sides to agree their future relationship, especially when it comes to trade. That really matters because the EU is the UK's largest trading partner. So last year, UK exports to the EU were worth £300 billion. That is two-fifths of everything we sell abroad. And the stuff we brought in was worth nearly £400 billion, around a half of all imports. Now, when we were in the EU, companies were able to buy and sell goods without paying paying taxes on the ins and outs. They're known as tariffs. But if countries don't have a free trade agreement, they have to abide by rules set by a body called the WTO, the World Trade Organization. That means taxes on things we buy and things we sell. Now, when the UK was in the EU, it was automatically part of trade deals with more than 70 other countries. But since we left, we've made new deals big one, the deal with the EU itself, that remains elusive. Trade deal or not, there will be changes from the 1st of January. Goods coming in will have lots of new paperwork and checks are expected. And that will be a big problem for lorry drivers. Deal or no deal, there is going to be a requirement to do customs declarations. The big issue that we face is that there are insufficient customs agents to be able to complete this paperwork. And the consequence of that is either business because they won't be able to send their product. But if they do, and they haven't got the paperwork done, we are likely to see vehicles being turned around on the Calais Straits uh, from Calais back to, the, back to the UK, and that's going to create significant chaos and significant queues. And Northern Ireland is also another major concern for both sides. At the moment, goods can pass freely from, say, England to the Republic of Ireland via Northern Ireland. Both sides have agreed there will be no return to a physical border but that means that Northern Ireland will remain part of the EU markets in a small way. But how to make that work without a hard border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, that's still being worked out. There are some newspaper reports this morning, as Chris was saying earlier, that there might be a breakthrough on fishing, but still some major sticking points on whether businesses will have to follow EU rules on things like workers' rights and government subsidies. And that's if the UK wants open access. On the knife edge, as we were saying, double spread in the mirror today, looking at the impacts on food, medicine, the economy, the border. But the truth is, we don't really know what's going to come out of this. If anybody does know, they're certainly not saying. And for us, we're wondering how much of it is posturing, politicians showing off. But for businesses, this is really real. They've coped with almost a year of COVID and now not knowing how to plan for January is virtually impossible. Nina, we'll see you again very soon. It's right. They're on from 9.15 this morning. Oh, I love that. <laughs> It is great. Now I have. Oh, oh, good morning, oh, Nina. Yeah, was that... Hi. Are you ready for it? Next instalment of your Brexit update. I will do, yeah. Wow. People weren't expecting that kind of intro to Brexit, were they? So many twists and turns, so many crunch weeks, but we mean it this time. This really is the 11th hour for trade talks. Keep in mind that two fifths of everything. Politicians can't reach a deal, expect big taxes on those products. It's been more than four years since we voted to leave the EU. So what is still hanging in the balance? Well, it's thought disagreements about how much European boats can fish in UK waters, whether we will allow EU rules on running businesses and who will enforce everything that's agreed still so far. A government which looks at ways of improving how politics works. Good morning. Let's cut to the chase. You followed every twist and turn. Are we going to get a deal? Yeah, I mean, that is the million dollar question. As someone who's been following this for the past four years, I really, really want to know the answer. Look, the reality is we don't know. We don't know. Negotiators are still talking and talks carried on until late last night. 
anything to take stock of progress. What does that say? That says clearly that both sides want a deal, but we know that if there is going to be a deal, it's going to require compromise where both sides move, and that's the tricky thing. How much of this is genuine? Some speculation that this is posturing from both sides. They both want to appear to be taking it as far as they possibly can for the interests of their people. Again, a really good question. I mean, obviously, for a very long time, both sides were just staring each other in, in, in the eyes and thinking, right, on these last really tricky issues, do I want to go first? Because if I do go first, I might lose out later on. But now time is really running out. And you heard reports last night that apparently the EU had moved slightly on fisheries. Again, we don't really know what's going on. Only those at the heart of the negotiating room do. going forward. So those are really tricky questions. Um, to my mind, negotiators probably know what that landing zone looks like, but it's not clear yet whether this is a deal, if one is reached, that can get the backing of the Prime Minister and the EU leaders. Georgina, there are some things that appear to be impenetrable, for example, with competition rules. It's a bit of a catch-22. The whole purpose for leaving the EU was... Uh, deal, then that means we have to allow some rules on competition, on environmental rights, on things like workers' rights. Can that compromise be met? Is it possible? I mean, clearly both sides have said that they want to reach a deal. So um, I think it is possible, but of course it's very tricky. I think the EU know that the UK wants to do things differently. Otherwise, why would you vote to leave the single market and customs union? The question for them is how do of those happen but also really a way to enforce common rules those rules that were, are in the treaty but I think there is a recognition in the EU that the UK will want to do things differently because it will want to be competitive not only on the EU scale but also on the global stage the question really is how you manage that um, but again we know that negotiators are working hard so will the test be whether they actually find a solution over the coming days and finally Georgina reports that supermarkets almost overnight. Is that catastrophizing? Is that accurate? Well, I mean, fortunately for the UK and the EU, um, change will happen on the 1st of January, which is a bank holiday, so we might not see that immediately. But look, I think both sides want to make minimised disruption, whether there is a deal or no deal. We know that things will look very different in January. Um, but again, I think the devil will be in the detail. We know that a, a deal doesn't get rid of all that paperwork. So if you're, you know, you make parts. in time at the border to make those checks. You're going to have to make sure you've got all the paperwork and that the lorry driver who's transporting your pies has all the, you know, his uh, driving license being recognised and he has the right paperwork. But that is stuff yeah. that, you know, with time um, that, that businesses can get ready for. But of course, they want to know exactly what's required of them. And that's to kind of, um, well, we'll have to watch out what happens over the coming days. We will indeed. Georgina Wright from the Institute for Government. Many thanks. Georgina just emphasising there, really, four and a half years on, nothing's agreed until everything's agreed. Oh, my goodness. When will it end? <laughs> Nina.